Beautiful morning in North Central West Virginia. Show you what's in the shop today. Good morning, Methane. Got a four foot caterpillar hoe bucket. Shank's pretty wore out. Evidence where she's ate clear through right there. The shanks are bad enough they can't change the teeth on it. Side cutter's pretty wore out. My buddy's getting me some new side cutters and bolts for that. When this thing came in, I took a torch and started blowing some holes in it. Eight or nine holes. Just as a way to get some uh, material thicknesses. And look at that hole in an area where there shouldn't be much wear. Uh, it's about three eighths. And come around here to where you see part of this bucket that's dented. It's just barely more than an eighth. So definitely too thin right here. As you come down here, we're about three sixteenths or a quarter. Uh, about three sixteenths or a quarter there. Same thing there. Then you get down to here and you see a piece of steel that's like three sixteenths or a quarter, but there's already been some work done on it where it's been plated on the other side from there down. Uh, I can show you that. Now down here, it's it's good. That That piece of steel I got my finger on right now is about an inch thick. But if you look inside, you see what I'm talking about. Uh, that area where there's already been a plate put in the bottom of the bucket. Right in this area above where it's been plated, where we've got a, a serious issue with it being thin, they've done a bunch of welding on it. And you can see a bunch of welding that's been done on the inside, and the shape of it's really rough. Uh, you can plate that, but it kind of makes a mess. I think it's quicker to cut it out. So we may be doing that. We're definitely, uh, definitely going to be putting all new shanks on it. New teeth. Replacing that thin metal. Replacing the side cutters. If you notice, uh, these sides are a little bit worn. Um, but a lot of the work that's been done on here is still good. Uh, obviously, all of this buildup has uh, got years of life left in it. And here too, other than maybe right here. And it's interesting how there's more wear on this side of the bucket than this side. And that has to do with uh, the way the operator swings. Um, you know, there's a lot more metal left on the bucket on this side. Then we go over and we look at this side and they've already worn the shank loose right here. And, and there's a lot more steel missing here. And if we look right behind the teeth, in this area um, you can see where I believe there was some sort of a wear bar here and there's not much left of it like this was a wear bar and uh, it's almost to the plate behind the wear bar so we'll probably add a wear bar here uh, there's been some work I know this isn't factory where a lot of this welding has been put in uh, between these wear bars here and some of it's kind of cold uh, as evidenced it, you know you see that welds not really fused there it's just it's just laying there uh, and I, I don't know I don't believe that's any kind of a hard facing but I do think that what they've done is as 
as that plate got thin, um, maybe at the time when they when they replated that one spot in the inside, they just took a took a day and and, and welded in between these wear bars. Uh, that's not hurting anything, but there is some stuff there that's that's not fused. So this is pretty much a, this is really a, a job that. I'm glad to see come in right now because, uh, you know, I've just been working with a lot of aluminum lately and, and, and making things pretty and fitting things perfectly and washing my hands five times a day and trying not to scratch stuff. Uh, I don't need to worry about washing my hands and scratching shit for a while working on something like this, you know, so. You know, you can get down and dirty, get out the carbon art and plasma cutter and torch and get, get mean with it and, uh, you know, run something above 130 amps for a change. It's been a while, uh, but we're probably going to get the OXMT fired up over there and have her up there around 250, 300 and let her, let her lay some smoke, which will be, uh, which will be a, a welcome change for, for what I've been doing lately. So let's get into it. Yep, made a mess. Go take a look at this real quick while I got these shanks off of here. Got, got rid of all them old shanks and uh, it was a lot of work, m m way more work than normal. I would say four or five times the amount of cutting that you'd normally run into. And that's because the way this plating was done by the previous repair, the previous welder uh, added that plate on the inside and they added this plate right here. Uh, see, this is the original right here. And this is what was added. So if you see how, you know, what it's like cutting one of these shanks off, if you want to cut this weld off right here, uh, the way they welded this entire thing in solid and, and they welded right over the weld to the shank, uh, the only way I could cut these shanks off, you know, was to remove all of this, all of this material. I had to cut down an inch just to get to where I could cut into the weld that was holding the shank on. So... I feel like uh, they didn't hurt anything by doing this, uh, but it did, you know, it made it, the, the way that is, it made it probably four or five times the amount of work that it needed to be uh, to remove those shanks. And if you're going to do any repairs later, or if you got an operator that pries on one corner shank too much, and just maybe that one shank needs replaced, um, then I feel like the way this was done was the wrong way to do it. Now they probably, uh, you know, my my guess is they probably thought they were doing a good thing for wear by filling this completely in with weld uh, and, and and welding this solid right around that shank weld. They probably thought that was going to help with wear, but I don't think really that's the case. You know, if you look at how the way that wear plates work, uh the 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 part of the steel that's going to take the brunt of the abrasion is the part that sticks out the farthest you know this bar right here uh sticking out is going to take way more wear than back inside of here so uh i think the correct way to to repair this and replace these shanks is going to be to cut enough of this material out so that 
I can weld this plate to the original plate right here and weld the shank to the original plate separately. That way the shank weld and the shank could be removed without cutting all the way through this inch of steel just to get to it. Making note of that real quick and getting back to it. And this is an example just how, how good and handy uh, the hoist system is in here to have multiple hoists. You know, it's, uh, I always said for, for, for metal fabrication and, and welding, uh, don't give me one 10 ton hoist. You know, give me five two ton hoists because you want to flip things over, you want to roll things around, you want to get things in position, and 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 this is this is the 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 most efficient way to deal with this kind of stuff. Uh, all right, let's get to it. Got all these shanks in place, tacked up. Everything lined up really nice. The way the shanks fit is correct. Just like factory. I'm happy with the alignment. I got the teeth on the outside ones. Yeah. Just pretty much want to make sure those those teeth stick out just a little more than the, the outside of your bucket. Now, when I was when I was cutting on this uh, earlier, I found an area right here that was cracked, and that's uh, that was a crack as a result of these teeth you know moving under stress back and forth and that's what this hard metal does it cracks you know if it uh, you, there's nothing perfect it, if you have mild steel the mild steel can bend and it won't crack but the mild steel will wear away the hard steel doesn't wear away as easy it lasts a lot longer but when you put stress on it it's brittle it cracks uh but where I found that crack earlier, I, I arc gouged it out and I welded it up. And then I got all these shanks in place and wouldn't you know, I found a bunch more cracks. Um, that's cracked right there. right there there and there and you might say well they had that thing welded 
completely full of weld, you know, between that huge plate and that tooth, and it was filled clear full. How could that crack? Well, the thing is, we don't know that that wasn't cracked and hadn't been cracked all along, and it very well could have been the reason that the last welder just decided to weld that completely full weld. He may have saw those cracks and said, well, I won't have to worry about those cracks if I fill this thing clear full of weld. Now, whether that's right or wrong thing to do, I mean, that's a matter of opinion, I guess. Uh, I can tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut these cracks completely out. I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the torch and the carbon arc. I'm going to probably torch from this side and uh, blow completely through where that crack is, and I'll. Uh, I'll weld it up on this side and then I'll go to the other side probably with a carbon arc and back gouge until I reach my my weld and then fill that up and then we'll have uh, no cracks so that's good let's do it So there hadn't been too much to make note of for a while. I'd just been welding. Uh, not hard. It's just work. Been welding on the hard ox plate and the shanks. And uh, where I put this wear plate, there was some pieces of wear plate here that I torched off uh, that were just remnants. I think I got some decent photos of that. But yesterday, whenever I was welding on, welding on this here, somewhere in the center of this, about right here, I blew a hole in it. And this is within the area right here where 
we have that good thick plating that someone else put on the inside of the bucket. Uh, and when I blew through that, obviously I could see the plating there. So what I did at that point was, rather than just fill the hole, I penetrated down through and welded to that plate and then continued to build and build weld until I got up to here, uh, essentially welding that plate to this plate, uh, which I think is something necessary to give it some increased strength. Um, and because that happened, uh, you know, we looked earlier where there was a bunch of weld buildup done in between these wear bars. Um, because that happened when I was welding on my hard ox plate there, I decided to do more welding in this area and you can see you can see what's happened here i've i've blown a few more holes in it uh the hole doesn't concern me as much as the fact that there's a little bit of gap here and that's the reason i think these need plug welded together so that so that this back side of the bucket is getting the benefit of the strength of the the plate that's inside of the bucket now, you might think, oh man, that must be paper thin if you blow a hole in it like that. But, you know, cool your jets because I'm running a quarter by eight, a quarter inch by 18 inch high deposit welding electrodes on 320 amps. Um, I could blow a hole in just about anything I wanted with my XMT inverter. Uh, with that thing cranked up, I mean, if I put that thing on 400, there's probably no part of this bucket I couldn't blow a hole in. So, you know, it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm playing with some 332 rods here. Uh, you know, as an example, this is a, this is a standard welding rod that's, that's going to be used the most. Uh, I mean, uh, any welding truck anywhere has got a one eighth inch 7018 like this on board. This is this is the bread and butter right here. Uh, this right here, this is a quarter by quarter inch by 18 inch high deposit rod. Let me lay these down. The standard welding rods are going to be 14 inches long. Uh, the high deposit electrodes are, are 18 inches long. <clears throat> and another thing that makes these high deposit, with most welding rods, your, your, your weld becomes uh, from this metal rod in the center and the rest of this is just flux. Um, just flux and purifying agents. Now, with a high deposit electrode, there is a considerable amount of iron, iron powder within this flux that actually becomes weld metal. So you're getting weld deposit from the rod and the flux. And you might think, oh, I'm going to get me a bunch of them because I got a bunch of welding to do. Let me just caution you, before you go buy a skid full of quarter inch high deposit welding rods, you know, you're going to want to get tuned in with running that type of electrode. And you're probably going to want to start out on the smaller sizes and work your way up. And I'm, I'm saying that because these electrodes for someone that hasn't used them before are extremely difficult to run. It's like uh, if you got a, you know, if you got a teenager and you want to teach them how to drive, it, it, it would be like taking them and, and putting them in an 18 wheeler with a 40 foot trailer loaded down with I beams and trying to teach them how to drive. That's not the way to start out. Um, if, if you want to run high deposit rod or large diameter uh, welding wire for that matter. You know, stuff that really gets a lot of work done efficiently. Um, in either case, I mean, we're we're managing a molten puddle that's the size of a quarter. 
you know, you're basically carrying uh, a molten puddle of lava that is uh, that is massive. And these these huge welds, they're great. Uh, you know, it's fabulous to be able to get. I mean, this is that's my thumb. To, it's great to be able to get uh, a bunch of welding done real fast with these high deposit rods but the thing is if you have a problem when you're operating this you got a big problem uh if you make a major goof when you're running a high deposit electrode you know in in a tenth of a second you can make a mistake that's going to take you 30 minutes to fix so just a word of caution there on that. Uh, I, I can see that from blowing through this, I'm going to be repairing this again, and I'm going to be doing some extra welding in between here to make sure that we've got a fair amount of strength between the back of this bucket and that plate that they put on the inside. And another thing this does is it kind of reinforces the idea that I probably need to cut some of this bucket out where it's thin up here and redo it um, because we got to make sure that it's strong enough that we don't put all this work into it and then get it out there in the field and you know they don't get any life out of it if you're going to put some work into it you you got to make sure they can put this thing on the hoe and and, and move some dirt with it and, and for a, a reasonable amount of time and you know this this kind of stuff is the reason why Man, I hate to quote stuff like this. I, I generally won't, you know, because you've got to get into it to see what needs to be done. I mean, it. I, when it comes to quoting uh, something like something like this, I can't see any further up a pig's ass than you can. But if I get into it and start working on it, and 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 you know, see see what's what, then I can make decisions uh based on what i'm seeing and figure out what needs done and and what's going to be the best course of action uh for the implement so i'm getting back to work quick note on that and y'all have a y'all have a good one later That's more gooder.
Looking good on the welding with these wear plates and shanks. And before I go any further, I gotta stop and clean this place up. I can only stand the filth for so long before I call it a safety hazard. Come on. Hey y'all, what do you think? Is that enough video for part one? What do you think, Shadow? Is that enough for part one? Dune? Is it time to go to part two? I tell you what, y'all, you guys just take it easy and I'll take care of it. I got this.